Gabriel Bien, justement, en fait aussi partie des supporters de la classe de l'Iran. Et là, nous, Totacello, avec la voiture numéro 9, l'Italien du Victory Engineering, sera sur la deuxième ligne de la grille de départ. Le pilote romain, âgé de 26 ans, Victory Engineering, c'est un type qui est aussi basé à Rome, d'ailleurs, managé par Giorgio Piccolo, un type qui s'est déjà jusqu'à l'année dernière. Sonido. Sí, eh, nosotros no, hemos reci no estamos Oye, recibiendo está, órdenes. ¿Está de llegando ya la, el audio? Me dicen que era un problema de aquí de la unidad y que ya tiene salida el audio. Audio, audio.
German Winkelhop, he is third at the moment, so a good start from him, and as you quite rightly pointed out, Kubica got a decent start, fourth, Will Power fifth, Sanignon, another Frenchman, sixth, Tocicello, seventh, Zuba, eighth, and Pile ninth. Uh, Simon Peganio is in tenth position, uh, Milos Pavlovich in eleventh, Koska dropping to twelfth. Japanese fans, Rui Fukuda is in 14th position and Adrian Vallas for the Spanish fans second in the championship remember is 15th with work to do but I have to say he's a bit out of sorts this weekend and I spoke to him yesterday and an ear infection could be the worst possible scenario for a driver because of your balance and because of the hearing and everything it just really throws you out oh, definitely especially with these cars they're so noisy that uh, <laughs> you know that's the last thing you want is uh, an ear infection but uh, ultimately yeah you, it's your balance it's uh, your big problem and uh, you just won't be on, on it as much as you should be. Well, I spoke to him yesterday and I said, well, what's the plan then? He said, well, I hopefully, you know, I'm doing everything I can to get better in time, but really it's a case of just trying to get go around and get some points. He's currently in 15th position and there's no reason, and there's always attrition in any race, so if he keeps his nose clean, there's no, no reason why he can't perhaps get into the top 10 and that, that would be job done, really. Yeah, no question. I mean, it's, it, it seems to be a lot of people that go off, um, especially in our races and, and all the races I've seen this weekend people will start going off because there's quite a few corners there that uh, 
and also the white lines. I don't know what the, uh, the yeah. Rules we'll talk are about that in a moment. Yeah, well, it's exactly the same as yours. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, if they go over the white lines, then they, they get penalties. So um, that if you make a mistake, you if you make a big mistake, and uh, you, you're in serious trouble. Now, interestingly enough, now I have another look at it. Mondini, to be honest, was thumped from behind from Tedeschi. So Mondini, really an innocent bystander in that, he was trying to cut the corner and avoid trouble, and Tedeschi after he braked, just went straight into the back of him. The inexperienced, just young 17-year-old from Italian, uh, from Italy, um, from RC Motorsport. And uh, you've got a feel for RC Motorsport. A brilliant year last year with Narain Karpakayan. They brought Karun Chandok, who uh, has been uh, very fast indeed, a former Asian champion. And this young Tedeschi, or Tedeschi, however you want to pronounce it, this young Italian. And um, now they've lost one of their drivers to uh, penalties and out of the championship effectively almost um, for three races and now Tedeschi's out of this one by the looks of things because I don't believe it didn't look that damaged but um, you know they're so easy to take the front wings off and the front nose off so then here we go we're about to get underway now what can Winkle do Hock do from the start and look at this Z Gubica almost got in trouble then by going too quickly and away we go then Tristan Gomedy leads them across the line, Winkelhock second, and Kubica all over the back. Yeah. This, this could be a chance for Kubica going into uh, into Dunlop. Um, if he gets a run, it doesn't look like he's close enough near. Well, Kubica almost went too quickly then. And he's got away with it. It doesn't look like anybody's really overtaken into, into the first corner. It's quite difficult on the safety car, especially here. So you're for quite a slow corner coming onto the straight. Mehdi Benani, the um, Moroccan, bringing up the rear ahead of the Belgian, Vervich. Frederick Vervich in 22nd place, Portiero. Long way down. Earth is he doing that? Terrible qualifying for him. Oh, drive through penalty, Gomedy. Gomedy's got a drive through penalty. Got That's got to be start. a jump start. Well, well, we say the picture perfect start has just turned into a nightmare for the Frenchman. Uh, he, he's going to be, uh, he's going to be destroyed over that. So maybe Winkelhock didn't actually get such a bad start after all. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. We're, we're yeah, probably we'll let him off this time. <laughs> well, it's just after watching him at Valencia, I just thought, well. Yeah. So then, there is going to be all sorts of drama in this race because Tristan Gomendy, who leads at the moment, has got to come in and take a jump start penalty. Kubica could win this race yet. Yeah. Well, Valles has gone one place already then. Through the old pit lane here. Yeah, he's on it. So then, Gomendy comes across the line but his pit board will tell him immediately that he has to come in and take a penalty now we talked about the rules 15 laps ago about the white lines explain that Wesley as somebody's been out there this weekend they've got to be careful about how much of the track they use because this is mostly a motorbike track and so there is a little bit more leniency but not for the cars the race director has said you've got so many places you can go so far over the line yeah basically what they've done is they've said that uh, the white lines are the white lines but where there are that where there are curbs you can use that you use that as an extension of the white line so what you're allowed to have two wheels over the, the actual curb and on and off the circuit but that's it if you have any any time four wheels over the white line or uh, the curb you're, you're in trouble good battle going on between Fakuda and Valles here in the battle for 15 position Fakuda just getting the better of it early on and Tristan Gomedy building on that lead but Winklehock perhaps if he's taken a quick look out of his eye or if his team have told him will know that Gomendy, who's just put the fastest lap in a 126.1 has to come in and do a jump start penalty how many laps do you have? Um, I think you have three laps I mean the, the, the team will be on the radio to, uh, to Tristan saying and if you don't you take know, it then you're black flag yeah then you're in real trouble um, but like you said he's, he's, on, he's on at the moment and he'll probably come in um, on his last possible lap so that he can get further in the field. Ooh, somebody spun there, that could help Gomendy if they bring out the safety again, but I don't think that car's going to get that far in the way. That is car number 20, that's GM Marie, who uh, has come into the championship full on now. Didn't yeah. start the year, but he is now with Dams for the rest of the year. And across the line they come then, Gomendy leads it by 1.9 seconds, but he's going to lose all of that, if not more, He's going to lose a lot more because he's got to come in and do a jump start penalty. His perfect start, as we thought, was just too perfect. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's a long pit lane here, so um, they're going to, he's going to—he's going to lose a lot of time, uh, which uh, is just terrible for him, really. Especially at the moment, you know, he's, he's, he's just come come for. Ravish just come past our commentary position. He goes into the pit, so a problem there for Frederick Ravish. 
Gomendy increasing that lead, but having to take that penalty, and surely he'll come in on this lap. And what a day it's going to be, because Tristan Gomedy, third in the championship, he sets another fastest lap, a 125.5. So he's flying out there. In fact, he's almost half a second quicker than anybody else, but he knows that he's got to take a penalty. So he's making hay while the sun shines, as they say. And this is going to be awful, because the crowd probably don't know it yet. And they're cheering him on, thinking that a Frenchman is going to run away with this race. But Gomedy's going to suddenly pull into the pits. No pit stops, of course, involved in this. And across the line he comes, he's not pitting this time. He goes across the line. Yeah, he's uh, he extended it again, he's now two and a half seconds. I mean, he must be he must be killing himself in there, you know. A team, the team will be distraught. Well, he's got to take it this time. That's the rules. Winklehock is second, La Rosa is third, Kubik is still fourth, Will Power is fifth, Salignon is sixth, Toccicello seventh, Zuba eighth. Pile and Pagano, the two Frenchmen, 9th and 10th. Milos Pavlovich has made it up to 11th. Koska fighting with him. Well, what a start for Gomedy. Start of the day with 35 points and third in the championship with a great, great opportunity to go ahead of Vales, who's currently down in 15th position and doesn't look like scoring uh, probably many points at all this weekend, given the fact that he's got a terrible ear infection and really isn't 100%. So Gomedy will be kicking himself. The question is, though, you know, you never say never, I suppose, because anything could happen if we have another incident, safety car can come out, and Gomedy could have a possibility of getting back into contention. Yeah, yeah, he can do, but obviously with these sprint races, it's um, it's difficult to overtake, you know. We, we've seen in the, in the feature race when they have to do a pit stop, that's when you can uh, you can make up for, for slight errors, but, um, you know, over, uh, he's only got 13 laps left and, uh, to make make up the time he's going to lose. He's going to have to be... Uh, a lot quicker than anybody. Well, he's so much quicker. He's, what, four seconds quicker. And he's not taking it this time either. No. So, <laughs> by my account, that's going to be a black flag, but, well, we'll see. Yeah, the, the, the KTR gang are just uh, just down from us, and they, they, they were shaking their board at him, so um, I think he's, uh, he's, he's probably getting a bit angry at the moment. He's, uh, he's probably arguing over the radio. Well, I suppose there is a... I mean, we've seen this in Formula 1. There is a time when you can appeal for a jump start and they'll be reviewing it but uh, well the jury is out on what is going to happen to Tristan Gomendy the local man from Tours who so desperately wanted to win this race he got away so well too well in fact and the scrutineers have said and the marshals have said and the organisers have said no you've got to come in young man yeah, the t the team manager car 15 report to race direction immediately as the yeah, he's, he flash up on our board. He needs to go in uh, now, otherwise uh, he might not be racing this afternoon. If well, they, uh, yeah, I wonder whether they're interpreting the rules correctly. That's it. Like you say, there's now a chance that he could be black flagged. So they want uh, Kurt Mollikens, who is the team leader, to go up there and quickly have a quick word to say, bring your driver in now or we're going to black flag him. Yeah, yeah he's... Uh yeah, he's in now. He's in now. So, yeah. obviously, he's thought better of it. The team deciding he may not have realised. He may have thought that this was his third lap. I think he was a lap over, and that's why uh, they've called him. He may get away with this yet. Now, Winklehock flashes past and in the lead. Now, the new leader, Winklehock, La Rosa second. And Kubica up to third. Gomendy with this drive-through penalty. This must be agonising for a yeah, drive. It yeah, must feel like an eternity. And the worst thing is if he takes his finger off the button a little bit too early and then gets gets another drive-through penalty no, speed. You but, uh, you know, yeah, he's just, unfortunately, you know, he's now just sort of right at the bottom. Now he's got to get through traffic if he's going to get anything out of this. He is faster than the men in front of him, but that's easier said than done. So Winklehock leads this race, followed by La Rosa and Kubica and Power. Come out 16th. I know that's that's where you'd have been, I think, <laughs> on the, the start line. I beg pardon. Now Winklehock's got a clear track, and as I said at the beginning of the day, good opportunity for Marcus Winklehock to get a win this weekend. He's been training for the last couple of weeks. He lives in La Spezia in Italy. And he's been actually training with Trulies fitness trailer. Yano Trulli of Formula One. Cecerelli is called and he said yeah they've been training together and using the same methods and he feels just really good about this afternoon and uh, now he's going to be feeling great with Tristan Gomedy pulling off. And also car 25 that's Vivish under Stewart's investigation we've just heard and the lead that Winklehack 
Hock has now is 3.4 seconds over fellow German Daniel La Rosa. Kubica is third, the championship leader, and I would have thought that Robert Kubica, being a smart fellow that he is, and likewise the Epsilon Uscardi team, will be advising him to probably stay where he is. He just needs to pick up points now. Yeah. And with Gomendi out and Vales 13th at the moment, just ahead of Fakuda. So he's winning that battle, is Vales, of uh, him and uh, Fakuda at the moment. He, uh, Vales, is uh, just behind Montanari. Montanari, of course, who won in uh, Monaco. But uh, didn't qualify at the man from San Marino as well as he wanted. Currently running in 12th position. Cesar Miguez, who had gearbox problems, is 15. And Tristan Gomendi is behind him. So Gomendi is on the track and in 16th position. The question is, can he make up any places? Winkelhock doing a very good job so far. But Daniel La Rosa must be delighted with this. This is uh, the best we've seen from him so far this season, without a doubt. Yeah, no, he's, uh, he's driving really well, you know, just keeping it on the island and um, you know he's a little bit slower than uh, than Winkelhock um, and a little bit slower than Kubica but you know like I said I think Kubica is just uh, you know he'll been told by his team you know your main competitors are out <laughs> almost mm. you know so uh, just get what you can really. Well I'm impressed with Daniel Arossa the man from just outside Frankfurt because well he qualified ninth in Monaco finished eighth didn't really do that well in Valencia 13th finished 13th and then 17th and finished 13th so this is quite a different Daniel LaRosa. Must like this Bugatti circuit here at Le Mans and really enjoying it. Plenty of midfield battles going on. Zuba involved. Likewise is Will Power, who's in a struggle at the moment with Kubica. Over third and fourth place. There's Fakuda. Yeah, Rio seems to be struggling uh, around here. Which, uh, He's been struggling all season. I don't yeah. understand it. No, he, uh, it, you know. You've, you've known him coming through the ranks. Yeah, he's yeah. had a similar upbringing to you. He's had the French La Filière yeah. and the campus, etc. He's had the classic upbringing in motor racing, done Formula 3, and yet he's got to this level and he just doesn't seem as on it as I've seen him. Yeah, I think, he, I mean, when I spoke to him at uh, Valencia, he'd been out of a car for a while um, before this, this year, and uh, I think he's just sort of a bit race, un, a bit unfit, really, in, mm. in that sense. And, um, you know, he's, he's getting beaten by his teammate quite quite convincingly really at the moment so uh, well, there's a lot of interest bit, yeah. in japan they've got several camera crews here this afternoon following his every move dhg his sponsor who import uh, american cars into japan they're full on and uh, they've got tv stations from tokyo following his every move and so there's a lot of attention and a lot of hope that he will turn it good uh, and let's hope he does before the end of the season but winklehock comes across the line a 125.064 and he really is pulling away. The gap now, 4.7 seconds. We'll look out for where Tristan Gomini comes across the line. Good close racing, this. La Rosa, Kubica, Power, Salignon. The Frenchman still in fifth position. Toccacello, winner at Zolder, still in sixth. Remember, Toccacello, sixth in the championship with 23 points. Not out of it by any means. And that's the beauty of it at the moment here in the World Series by Renault. With 12 races, including this one to go, it's still very open. Kubica's lead is not insurmountable by any means. He only had a 4.5 point with his pole position in race two lead going into this afternoon. So there's a chance for any of the other second stages, if you like, to make their move this afternoon. Fleming's on a... Fleming's six tenths of a second quicker than the Winkelhoff at the moment. So, um, yeah, he's, uh, I can't see him actually on the screen. <laughs> well, Fleming, remember, started at the back. And yeah, he's yeah. currently in 28th oh, position. Well, no, he's, he's four laps third down. position. Yeah, but he's, uh, he's going quick. Yeah. Well, yeah. like I said, in the test, Fleming was very quick, and he just got ruined by the wet qualifying session. He just got stranded out on the track and just couldn't get going. Uh, and the marshals pulled him off the track, and that was the end of his session, really. They, they, they red flagged it, and he did get going. He got one lap, but he had cold tyres, and that was pretty much uh, game over. Yeah, no, he'll be, he'll be disappointed, but uh, he, he's uh, still, um, still the quickest by some, some margin. So across the line they come and Winklehock increases the lead with less than seven laps to go now to 5.1 seconds over fellow German. Well, here we are in France. And Audi have dominated the, the Le Mans 24-hour race for the last four or five years. And it looks as though two German drivers in French cars are going to dominate this afternoon in race one. A fantastic Renault weekend we've had. And the fans enjoying every minute of it. Over 80,000 have come to the circuit. And I'll tell you what, I can't think of anywhere else in the world whose fans are so passionate about motor racing and this circuit. And uh, 
Uh, it took us an hour and a half just to get in yesterday. Yeah. And um, we've had displays. We've got Formula One cars out this afternoon. There's been a thousand Renault cars from over the years. And of course, Renault, one of the original manufacturers. And in fact, motor racing, if you like, began here in France, the first ever race, Paris to Rouen, all those years ago. And of course, this famous 24 hour race of Le Mans that takes place on this circuit. This, of course, the shortened version circuit, effectively what we call the motorbike circuit, the Bugatti circuit, which was formed in 1966. But it too has a wonderful history, and there's been some superb races here as well. Markus Winkelhock is going to make his name here. There's your championship leader. That's Robert Kubica of Poland. Looking to get some decent points out of this afternoon. He has pole position, remember, for race two. So Kubica can quite happily take a third place in this. Oh, look how wide they're going at the end. Very they, wide. They're definitely going to be in trouble. You reckon? Oh, I would have thought so. Well, I was going to ask you that because it's the one place where they seem to go so wide. Well, you're allowed to have your wheel, two wheels over that kerb, and you're supposed to have two wheels on that kerb. Gomendy is just one second now behind Fakuda and Vallez, and that is interesting because, of course, Gomendy now is chasing Adrian Vallez of Spain, the youngster who is second in the championship. Gomendy started the day just five points behind him. He's now two places and two seconds behind him on the track, and he's got six laps, or just less than that, to try and catch up and maybe get ahead of him. Well, he's just over a second quicker than Fukuda on the last lap, and, and Valles is uh, he's a, he's, he's a half a second quicker than Valles. So um, if he can um, keep it going and, and just catch him off off guard, really, and uh, and, and slice down the inside somewhere, Kubica all right. in third position, just did a 125.7, almost identical time to La Rosa, and in fact, it's amazing. Winklehock is pulling away yeah, by half see. a second a lap. Really is putting the metal down at the moment. Kubica, though, looks to be catching La Rosa in this lap. There you go. There you see the gap between. There's nothing, really. They come back on to the start-finish. We'll see what Kubica's lap is as they come across the line. Kubica does a 125.5, but actually, La Rosa did exactly the same time. So, absolutely nothing between them as they head up the hill towards the Dunlop Bridge again. Five laps to go. Winkelhock, La Rosa and Kubica. Two Germans and a Pole. Followed by the Australian, Will Power. Salignon is in fifth position. Tocicello sixth. Zuba seventh. And Pile eighth. I think Pavlovic and uh, Pagenon has just had a, uh, a ding dong because they've, uh, they've overtaken. And uh, Pagenon has just lapsed about two seconds a lap slower than he, than he has been. So um, I don't know what's happened there. But, uh, well, keep an eye on Gomendy because um, he is half a second quicker. But Winklehop out on his own. Must be a lovely feeling. Well, the man who has certainly threatened to get a race victory said to me this afternoon that he felt that this time it was his time. Can't get better than pole position. He didn't get the best of starts. Either way you look at it, maybe Tristan Gomini did jump the start because that was a, a flying start. But uh, Winklehock just didn't get off the line as well as he should have done, perhaps. He held on to second place. Gomendy was penalised. And that pretty much changed the face of the race. Kubica still going in pursuit. He hasn't given up now on a second place. And if uh, one mistake is made by La Rossa, who really is the... Um, well, he's crashed the party. We've hardly seen him this season. And suddenly, he's a factor. Into Wetton team, though, are a very experienced team. They know what they're doing. And they've got Daniel La Rossa right up there. Yeah, Gomedy's right on Bakuda now, um, so that should uh, that should be doing it. There's something be going on there. Look, there's a good old ding dong here now We're between uh, Pavlovic and uh, Pagano. Yeah. Well, like I say, Pagano is definitely uh, wanting to get a decent result out of today. He's tenth at the moment, can score points. Three hundred guests here. He's got to talk to them after this, poor man. <laughs> of course, he gets another chance in the next race. And in that one, Kubica lines up alongside Will Power. Interestingly enough, Marcus Winkelhock is on the third row for that race. So Marcus definitely wanted to turn this first race into the best result possible. Winkelhock way down in the championship 13th, but even he was philosophical with 11 points at the beginning of the weekend. He said, look, it's, it's a long way to go yet. 12 races, another race, a street race in Bilbao. Anything can happen. Uh, and as you well know, Wesley, it's never over till it's over, is it? Oh, definitely not. Yeah, and especially with this, this, this street ca street race in Bilbao, it's um, you know you only need to make one mistake and um, you're missing the corner there. So um, that could be 
could be an advantage or a disadvantage. You well, you look at it, really. Well, I know that the Spaniards are really looking forward to that. There's a lot of excitement in the camp about what that race is all about. The street circuit, first time they've been there, and it is a magnificent setup, a wonderful city. And the people of Bilbao are really looking forward to that, and that's just in a week's time. And will Winkelhock take victory and a chance to get in contention? He leads at the moment, La Rosa by quite a long way. Kubica is third. Power, Salignon Toccacello, the Italian, is sixth. Zuba, seventh. Pile, Pavlovic, Paganyuk, Koska, Thomas Koska, and Montanari winning in Monaco, but 12th here this afternoon, and a little bit disappointing from the man from San Marino. Three laps to go, and Marcus Winkelhock. Remember Joachim Winkelhock, great touring car man. Manfred Winkelhock, of course, a tradition of great German racing and they've been right up on the top of their game. Schumacher might now be the modern day equivalent but a few years ago in German racing there was only one name and that was Winkelhock. And he might just this afternoon use uh, the great Michael Schumacher who's way down the grid in Formula One at the British Grand Prix. <laughs> Yeah, no, Winkelhock's driving great, you know, he's consistently three or four tenths quicker than uh, pretty much anybody out there and uh, doing, doing a great job, really. Two laps to go, and I don't think Kubica's going to make much more ground on La Rosa. He's doing a good job as La Rosa as they come across the line again, once again. Even though Kubica's three tenths quicker, just can't see a place where he's going to overtake him. But, I may be wrong, two laps to go. This marvellous Bugatti circuit, beautiful sunshine, over 80,000 enjoying every moment of it. And Wesley, you started your career just across the way from here, didn't you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, the filiere over the back. Um, yeah, I've been here, I've watched quite a few races here with uh, just being over the road, you know, you get the odd Sunday off and uh, I don't know why, but you know, you go and watch, uh, go and watch racing. So, uh, and you're a typical example of what we've got out here this afternoon in terms of going from La Filière, from the campus to 1.6 Renault to 2 litre Renault which you're in now and then eventually to 3.5 where you're heading yourself. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's what uh, you know Renault wants and um, you know they, you can't beat the, beat what they're, they're, they're putting on at the moment. It's, it's fantastic. You know, they, I was speaking to the Renault guys the other, uh, yesterday and they said they had more people here than they had for the Superbikes. So I mean, it was amazing. And that's on a Saturday. Imagine what it's going to be like sort of uh, lunchtime today. So. Um, it's, it's just, it's just they're doing they're just a great show, really. Yeah, it's a great show and a great opportunity for young drivers at a decent rate, if you like, in terms of costs. Portiero does a 124.2, so Portiero, Felix Portiero, didn't qualify well. The Spaniard is flying now, but it's a little too late as Winklehock comes across the line for his last lap. So Marcus Winklehock with a massive lead across the line comes La Rosa, fellow countryman, but he's 7.6 seconds down on Marcus Winklehock. And finally, something for him to smile about. Started today 13th in the championship with 11 points. That will improve dramatically now. Yeah, and in fact, actually, we'll put him right up there. Felix Portiero might be doing the fastest lap. And he'll get a point for that, but he only had 24 points. And if Winklehock can get some decent points out of race two, he'll be right up there. Because once you drop off from Kubica Vez and Gomendi, who again won't score well, so this really is opening up the championship dramatically. Kubica is going to extend his lead. But Vez, Gomendi, and Zuba, well, Zuba's going to score decent points, but Winklehock's going to put himself right up in there now. Yeah, definitely. You know, with these, the point system here, it's very good in the World Series that you, know, you get 15 points for a win. Um, and and you, only the top 10 get get points. So that if you do actually have a have a good good weekend, you could really find yourself creeping up the order quite quickly. So then, just a couple of corners for Marcus Winkelhock of Germany as he comes across the line. The man from Berglin is going to take the checkered flag here at the famous Bugatti Circuit to take race one of the World Series by Renault of 2005. Long way to go in the championship. Don't forget him or don't count him out by any means because Marcus Winkelhock has just made himself a factor. A 2005 championship title chase. La Rosa gets his best result, fellow Germans. So Germans one and two. Kubica takes the, the pole. The championship leader extends that lead. Will Power gets a decent result of fourth place. Salignon, the local man, takes fifth place. Eric Salignon, Mr. Consistency, who had a great Valencia and now he's taken fifth at home. Toccacello, consistent again in sixth place, but hoping to go one better, or even better than that, in the next one. Zuba scores. 
Gomendy in the end finished behind Fakuda. So Fakuda did a good job actually, and Vaez did finish ahead of Gomendy, but really doesn't make any it difference. doesn't make any They're difference when Gomedy points. could have won this race and I yeah. said at the start if he gets the start this could change the whole year for him and unfortunately he's changed it for the reverse because he jumped that start and the official said nope drive through penalty he did an extra lap which I think the officials will probably let him go with they've asked Kurt Mulligans to go to the uh, race control but uh, yeah I wouldn't like to be Kurt Mulligans at the moment so uh, I, know, I know what they're like and uh, I don't know if they will let him go because they, they seem to be they seem to be fairly strict on on it and anything and if he's uh, if he's made a faux pas then he's uh, he's going to have to pay for it. But really, at the position he's finished, it's not going to make a great deal of difference. No, no. It's, it's, it's if they do something to the next race because uh, in the in the Euro Cup with uh, I was racing, I got I got wiped out by somebody and they put him to the back of the grid for the next one. So ultimately, well, that he ruined my race in the first one, he ruined his race in the second one. So. Um, they, can, they do sort of seem to spring things out, so, uh, <laughs> you know, I think it'll be a bit nervous at the moment. Great result for Marcus Winklehock, great result for Draco Racing, the man, of course, who did DTM in 2004, was fourth in the Formula 3 Euro Series. In fact, he said that he got his knowledge of the circuit, the Bugatti circuit, from the Euro th Formula 3 Championship, so he knows it well, and has finished third here in that series, and now he's finally taken victory here at the Bugatti circuit. And I know, because he's a fun guy, as Winklock, he'll get out of that car with the biggest grin on his face. Kubica comes in alongside him. And I think Kubica will be happy with his day so far, because a good third place, no mistakes. Yeah, he started six and he's come third. So, so there's nothing wrong with that, no. Good job. <laughs> well, it's finally come good from Germany.